coming up on the 80s Emporium. Michelle calls roll on our top 80s high school movies. Also, which four unrelated films all take place at the same school? Sharpen your pencils and grab your hall pass. The 80s Emporium starts now. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle and welcome to the 80s Emporium, your home for everything 80s. In the blink of an eye, summer has come and gone. Sorry kids, it's time to go back to school. I loathe the bus. School, specifically high school, is a popular subject in cinema, with the 1980s especially latching onto the genre. Our favorite decade brought us teenage coming-of-age comedies, heart-wrenching dramas, groovy musicals, spine-chilling slashers, and more. So to get you through syllabus week, let's review our favorite 1980s movies that take place at high school. One of the most important and exciting days of high school is day number one. In fact, Michelle Pfeiffer and Maxwell Caulfield sing about it in a film that probably looks strangely familiar to you. Well, that's because the popular musical Grease has a little-known sequel. Despite some catchy new songs, Grease 2 failed to catch Grease Lightning in a bottle twice. Plans for a continuing franchise that had mapped out two more movies and a television series were immediately scrapped. The first day of school is where enemies are made and friendships are born, sometimes within a few seconds of each other. Where'd you learn how to drive anyway? You're supposed to stay on the right side. Hey, I like that hat, man. You sell men's clothes where you got that? Here, in the major. How you doing? Kevin Bacon's breakout role was as Ren McCormick in Footloose, but it almost didn't happen. Actors Rob Lowe and Tom Cruise were both up to star in the film before opportunity fell to Bacon. Back in the 80s, before internet was widely available, there were only two ways to do research for a history exam. One was to go to the library. The other was to travel through time in a phone booth. In the original script, Bill and Ted used a 1969 Chevrolet to travel back in time, but it was changed due to concerns that it would appear too similar to the DeLorean in Back to the Future, which had come out four years prior. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure was an unexpected hit and remains a cult classic. Excellent! But school is much more than academics. Wouldn't you like to be popular? There's a whole social hierarchy with students constantly trying to increase their standing or remain at the top. Such is the case in John Hughes's Weird Science, where two bookish high school students use a computer to create a beautiful woman to help increase their social status. I can't even get my computer to connect to my printer, and we're in the 2020s. But the never-ending popularity contest can also lead to more serious consequences, such as in the black comedy Heathers, where Christian Slater and Winona Ryder decide to kill off the cool kids at their school. The subject matter made it a highly controversial film, and it was actually a major bomb at the box office, pun intended. But it received critical acclaim and has since spawned adaptations for both television and the stage. Now that's not to say different clicks can't, well, click. Can't Buy Me Love features a pact between a nerd and a cheerleader. He will help her pay off a debt if she pretends to be his girlfriend. Uh, no hand-holding, no kissing, and I get my lunch hour off. Three lunches. And the pep rally on Friday. Four lunches, that's it. Okay, deal. The film split critics, but it was looked upon more favorably than its 2003 remake, Love Don't Cost a Thing. Pretend to be my girlfriend for a couple of months. All right, one week. Pretty in Pink focuses around a girl who works at a record store and lives on the wrong side of the tracks, and a boy who is teased by his fellow rich preppy friends for liking someone of a lower class. The film stars Molly Ringwald, Hughes's go-to leading lady for high school films in the 80s. John Hughes is known for his many coming-of-age high school films, but Sixteen Candles was his first. In the film, Ringwald's love interest is played by Michael Sheffling. Sheffling would retire from acting only seven years later. There are a lot of stressors on any high school student, but none is more dangerous than peer pressure. Such is the case for Casey Shimosko, who is challenged to a fight after school in 1987's 3 o'clock high and spends the whole day trying to get out of it. If Casey looks familiar to you, you might recognize him as one of Biff's sidekicks in Back to the Future. Perhaps as a result of all the fighting that apparently goes on in 1980s high schools, the students of Lakeview decide to hire each other as bodyguards. I'd like you to meet my bodyguard. My Bodyguard is most notable for being the film debut of actors Adam Baldwin, Joan Cusack, and Jennifer Beals. It's unlikely that winning a fight will solve your teen angst-ridden troubles, but it is likely that it will land you in detention. I think you know where the front office is. You dick! 
In some kind of wonderful, Eric Stoltz hears his crush is going to be in detention, so he gets himself thrown in there too, only to find that Leah Thompson is nowhere to be found. Is, is this detention? Some Kind of Wonderful began as an original idea from John Hughes, but it soon evolved into a rewrite of Pretty in Pink, a movie Hughes was unhappy with. And then we arrive at what is easily the most famous detention movie in the history of film, The Breakfast Club. John Hughes originally hoped to make this his directorial debut, but Sixteen Candles was deemed to be a safer choice for the first-time director. Today, The Breakfast Club is considered to be not only one of the most quintessential films of the 1980s, but one of the best coming-of-age films in cinema history. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we post new content. Also, be sure to check out the 80s Emporium online shop for some super cool 80s swag. We've all had our fair share of bad teachers, but most of us were lucky enough to avoid the ones with the diabolical plot to turn their students into zombies. In Zombie High, Virginia Madsen attempts to save her new classmates from the faculty's evil schemes. The horror comedy is notable for being the acting debut for future film director Paul Feig. 1988's Stand and Deliver, based on a true story, nearly swept the 1989 Indie Spirit Awards. Edward James Olmos was nominated for an Oscar for his portrayal of math teacher Jaime Escalante. Only a year later, Lean on Me, another drama based on a true story, starred Morgan Freeman as a principal who attempts to reform a troubled school using some unusual methods. You will sing the school song upon demand, or you will suffer dire consequences. And finally, there's Dead Poet Society, which follows a group of prep school students who are inspired by their new unorthodox English teacher, played by Robin Williams. Yet another classic from John Hughes' Ferris Bueller's Day Off follows three high schoolers who skip school in favor of a day full of adventures. With an impending writer's strike on the horizon, Hughes came up with the idea and wrote the script in less than a week so that he would not break union rules if the strike occurred. They bought it. Following a number of students dealing with relationships, academics, jobs, and more, Fast Times at Ridgemont High was a surprise hit. The film was based on a book by screenwriter Cameron Crowe, who went undercover as a high school student to see how teenagers in the 1980s acted. The film is notable for featuring three actors who would become future Oscar winners, Forrest Whitaker, Nicolas Cage, and Sean Penn. The end of high school is usually marked by the long-standing custom of prom, which serves as an important plot point in many of our 80s high school movies. I'm going to the prom! What? The little-known TV movie Dance Till Dawn focuses on a group of seniors who struggle with social anxieties created by the once-in-a-lifetime event. The comedy featured a number of future stars including Christina Applegate, Matthew Perry, Alyssa Milano, and Kelsey Grammer. While prom can feel like a life-or-death situation for teenagers, sometimes it actually is. The Canadian slasher Prom Night starred Jamie Lee Curtis fresh off her debut in the original Halloween and was a huge success. The film, which was set in 1974, required disco music for the dance. But when the producers were unable to afford the rights to songs by the likes of Donna Summer and Gloria Gaynor, they had composer Paul Zaza write a whole original disco album in five days. The soundtrack was a hit, but never released until 2019, a whopping 40 prom nights later. Valley Girl, a loose rom-com adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, features its grand finale at prom. The film features iconic prom moments such as students making decorations, couples showing up in a rented limo, and the announcement of the prom king and queen. But like most 80s movie prom nights, something goes wrong. Finally, here's one more bonus piece of trivia for you. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Sixteen Candles, Weird Science, and The Breakfast Club, all from writer John Hughes all take place at the same fictional Chicago school, Shermer High. No way. Yes way, Ted! Well, there you have it. A look at our favorite high school films of the 1980s. Now I want to hear from you. What's your favorite 80s high school movie? Did we miss any? Comment below. Follow us on social media and use hashtag 80s Emporium. From all of us here at the 80s Emporium wishing you a great school year, thanks for watching. Let's have a wonderful year. Need a last minute gift for someone special? If so, you can now find your very own Stu Pollard on Cameo, where he's raising money for Trunacy.org.
It's over. Go home. Go.